so tonight we got this this field of dream games in that's Iowa. right now one of the things that i forgot and i was doing some of the um the leg work for our cbs sportsman at this yeah, point. yeah 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 uh my buddy, uh, former colleague over at CBS Sports, Tony Petiti. Oh, Petiti. Who, yeah, who became the right-hand man to Rob Manford. This yeah, was yeah. his brainchild. That's He's right. He's no longer with Major League Baseball, but this was his brainchild. Let's do something special. And let's kind of recreate the field of dreams. And of all the pitchers that the Yankees could be walking out there tonight, <laughs> they're walking out Andrew Haney, who's basically been here for two starts, and he got here at the beginning of August. When this season started, the last thing Andrew Haney ever could have possibly thought was that he was going to be pitching in the Field of Dreams games for the Yankees. On national television. On national television tonight around 7 o'clock on Fox. And uh, he's going against Lance Lynn, one of the better pitchers. Yeah, he's uh, amazing how good he's continued to yes. be, Lance Lynn. He's, uh, I think he's like 10-2 or something like that. He's got an ERA below 3 and like 2.03 or something like that. He's like you know one of the top pitchers in Major League Baseball, and one of the reasons why uh, the White Sox are so good. Now they lost yesterday, one nothing to Minnesota. The other thing that's going on is the Dodgers, you know, beating the Phillies two in a row. The Mets had to win yesterday's game. Oh. Last night's game was the fifth postponement between the Mets and the Nationals. They'll play a doubleheader today. When they always split, they always split doubleheaders. Uh, well, they, 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 they can't split. They can't split. They can't split. split. And, and, you know, by the way, the Braves and the uh, the Phillies are now tied for first place. And the Mets are basically two games less played. So they have the same, I think, amount of wins. They're a game out, though, right? Essentially. Yeah, essentially. But they're all right there. But the Braves won last night. Uh, and here come the Braves. You know, that that's my point, that they are tied now with the Phillies uh, in first place. Uh, just a, a I game think the Braves are going to win a division. I, yeah, said I know it you said week, that. A week and a half ago, I think that's still going to happen. I like, you said whatever you want, but this Drury guy... He comes through. He's been great. He He's kind of just stones. comes through, man. And, you know, obviously the, the infield is in for the uh, the Nationals last night, and he comes through with a huge pinch hit. And, you know, I can't say enough about that guy. That guy has done his job. That's all I can tell you. But um, yesterday was a gas can game. Sure. And, uh, you know, the Mets came away with it. They needed to win it, and now somehow they have to sweep today. They just have to sweep. That's all there is to it. Yeah, it really is unfortunate that you had another delay, another situation. Not, I mean, you would have had a doubleheader yesterday, but now like you're having a like, doubleheader today. I feel like they have, like, what, 10 or 11 games left with the Nationals? The Nationals are a fraction of a team. You got it. Well, I mean, you just saw what happened yesterday. It's a perfect example. You're down what three to one. Then you you tie the game four four. Then you're down seven four, and you storm back because that team has got no bullpen. Absolutely, I mean it's tomato can after tomato can comes into the game. Guys who probably shouldn't even be in the major leagues. And the Mets took advantage for once with their offense. So they got to continue to do that before they go into this gauntlet stretch against really good baseball teams because of the Nationals, a shell of themselves. So they're a shell of a major league baseball team. Yeah, that's exactly are. right. And I was looking, you know, or listening to Luis Rojas after yesterday's afternoon game. Oh, scintillating and, he is. That yeah, Luis I Rosa. know. But you know, he's he's in a weird, really weird spot. And he was like, oh, I'm so glad to see the offense and. I'm Paraphrasing here a little bit, you know, it's good to see the guys come alive. This is a resilient group. I'm seeing a plan against one of the worst teams in baseball right now. Well, it's just a classic between, the, between the Nationals and the Cubs, they basically have sold off pretty much every one of their major league assets, yeah. with the exception of a couple young guys like Soto that are still here. I mean, this is a team that you should be beaten up on because the next two teams you're going to see, it's not going to be this easy. That's why they have to sweep today. They just have to sweep. I don't care what I don't. It, they have to take both. They cannot lose to this team. Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's sort of like good cop, bad cop, where you had Zach Scott in his press conference, and then Luis Rojas after this game yesterday was, I mean, it was all about how great it is, and this is the guy's got to believe, and I told them, and this is what they're capable of, and all these positive things. Uh, it's not going to mean anything. If you even you drop even one of these. know who's pitching for the Nationals? Well, they don't. It's just question marks, as we see on CBS Sports Network. It's just question marks. They don't know. Nobody knows. The Nationals don't know. How are we supposed to know if the Nationals don't know? They got to win both of these games. Have to. Then we'll see where it goes from there. I'm still pretty. <laughs> you got to show me more than last night. You right. got to show me more than even beating these two teams. Are you uh, Are you going to watch this game tonight? You got to yeah, watch course, the game, right? You got to watch yeah. the Field of Dreams game. But we got a dinner tonight. And then, oh, when's first pitch? Is it 8? No, it's like 7.05. 7.05? All right, good. I think so it's we, early. Let me, let, let me check. And uh, while I check, 
Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? Oh, yeah, sure. So the cornfields. Yes. Uh, Andrew Heaney against the White Sox in the cornfields. Corn do we know the dimensions? 715. 715, okay. Yeah, I, I, I've watched a couple of videos on the, the making of the field and everything. It looks great. And the only way that you can go to this game, supposedly, is if you have an Iowa driver's license. In other words, a checking uh, identification to be able to go to this game. Doesn't it feel that like the Yankees are in the midst of a very important stretch and they're fighting every game to make it to the playoffs? Doesn't it feel like this gimmicky stuff should have happened earlier in the season? The little engine that could. Remember, they were supposed to do this last year and it got canceled. No, I know, but you know what? It's like well, we're, we're, in talking, the middle of, we're in the middle of August. You this want the gimmicky game right now? It's not a gimmicky game. Oh, it's they're going to play gimmicky. baseball. I listened to Aaron Judge talk yesterday. He's excited. Well, he's the just. The players, I got to tell you. If I'm the players, I'm all in on this, man. This is a great thing, just like I would would have been all in if I were a Red Sox or Yankee player oh, and playing in London. I'm sure that these pampered professional athletes these days are thrilled that they got to go to Iowa to play I, in a cornfield. This is great. And this is just different, I'm sure man. they're you thrilled. Know, I they're would think that they're probably season, staying in a La Quinta in somewhere on the think, side of an think interstate. That their season is monotonous as hell. Yeah, And, you know, to do something a little bit different, to go out there and come walking through the cornfields and recreate. It's for the fans. The players there. probably hate it. I'm they telling you, no, it. they're totally they jaded. No, They're no, jaded. No. They're pampered. No, they they're hate not. it. No, they're not. No, they're not. The they fans are going to love it. The players are going to hate it. The players are going to love it. And it's they're just, just like going to be, they're going to give you the classic like sound bite. go up to Williamsport and play up there. He had a great answer yesterday, Zach Wilson. Did you hear his answer? I did not hear. When he was asked about it, some of the struggles, he's like, hey, I'm doing stuff in practice to see what I can get away with. It's practice. Like, this is what I do. What, that's There's the like, idea. It's like the NFL. I'm trying. I'm getting the NFL guys. I'm trying different things. It's like, and I threw a pick. Uh, you know, C.J. Mosley knocked a, uh, down a ball. He batted a ball. It got picked. That's something I'm not going to do now. Uh, you know, I'm probably going to check it down. So I'm learning. It was. I thought it was a really good answer. You know what I would say, and I think Bill Parcells would have said this to my, my best friend in the whole wide world, in the football world, Phil Sims. Hey, Phil. You gonna throw a couple of interceptions today, or what are we gonna do? Yeah, yeah. I take a couple of chances. In sure. Words, let's let's let it rip. Let's yeah. throw the ball down the field. Let's see me. Let me see that arm. Let's let get it rip. Big, let's get some playmaking sons of bitches out here. Yeah. And let's start scoring some touchdowns. Enough with the safe stuff. Oh, God, in, in today's NFL, Let it's not rip. about being safe. It's about letting it rip. They didn't draft Zach Wilson to check down and hand the ball off. Have you seen Josh Allen over the last three years? Have you seen more? Um, uh, my man Patrick Mahomes over the last four years. Damn have you right. Seen what those guys do? I, I've seen them. They let it rip, man. They Just let, it, let rip. it go. Do you see Aaron? Ro have you seen Aaron Rodgers? I play? have seen Aaron Rodgers. Yes, I guess plenty against your team. Yeah, he beats them all the time. He just he lets it rip. He does. That's what you need to do. You got to have some guts to play at the position, but you also have to understand. And I've told you this a million times, mm. and I've told our audience this a million times. Yeah. That these kids have got so much to learn. I, I think I have my playbook in the in the office. Maybe we can go through a little bit we of that. Did, well, we did. We did not that Just long ago. Just to remind ago. all yeah. you maniacs out there that he's got everything to learn. He's got to learn how to talk to his coaches. He's got to learn defenses. He's got to learn situational football. He's got to learn how what he can get away with and what he can't get away with on the field in the NFL as compared to when he was playing at BYU. Yeah, it will be another long year for that. But, you know, hopefully what you want to see is what we saw from Joe Burrow and the Bengals, what we saw from Justin Herbert and the Chargers. Yeah. That's, you want to see growth. You want, And you know what? He's got to play seven, assuming he makes it through 17 games, by the way. He's got to make it through 17 long games. The mental anxiety that comes along with that is is. I, I can't explain to you just how difficult it is all to handle. As a rookie quarterback... In a new city, I can a see new some place. sort of mental breakdown coming. You all really were predicting a mental breakdown. Well, I'm just saying, like all there a line on quarterbacks. That? That's what the hitting the rookie wall is all about. Yeah, it happens. You know, it's it's feelings. It's feelings. It's understanding the human nature and the psyche, and just just supporting these people. Yeah. Get is that is that a uh, shirt that you wear both ways, like inside and outside? Because I feel no, like it's on. No, it's not. It's not a reversible. Of, I like I like the shirt because it says summer. No, it does say summer, but like when you roll up the sleeve, it looks like it's a darker color underneath. It is. It is a darker color underneath. It but just it's looks not, reversible. It's not a reversible. You sure you don't have an inside out? I'm positive. See where the buttons are? Yeah, just make it sure. It, it's supposed to look a little bit washed. 
Oh, that's the look? It's like the beachy washed look. And I'm no, trying to set shirt. the tone for tomorrow. No, I love the shirt. Oh, you I love do. the shirt? I do. I you just thought the shirt? I'll give you the shirt right off my back if you want it. Are you going to do the rest of the show with no shirt on? No, but I wouldn't want to, like, you know. No, 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 keep the, the shirt. You. That shirt's you. Okay. That's a you shirt. And that's a you shirt. It is. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.